Hey everyone! Hello! I'm Marina. And I am Kennedy. And, and welcome! Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to another Facebook Live. Today we're pretty excited about the projects that we have going on. I'm really excited. So we figured out how to do reverse canvases, or at least I did. Marina's very seasoned <laughs> in this craft. But I played with some of my first reverse canvases yesterday. And not only are we doing reverse canvases, but we are using ink drip printables on the canvas material, which I thought is a super, super cool craft, and I'm pretty excited. Absolutely. And before we jump in uh, into this, I think you want to go ahead and talk about what's back in stock so we can go ahead and clear that off the table we don't get anything on that. Some of you may know already, but we recently added some can coolers to our site and they sold out very quickly and we have restocked them on the site. That's so right. you can get these, are these all of the options? These were the ones that have been restocked. Okay. So we probably have um, a couple more because we did have a couple more available before um, and I went and pulled what was just added back to the shelves. So last time we didn't even get to tell you guys about them before they sold out. So <laughs> this time we're giving you all a heads up and saying, hey, these are back on our website. They're so much fun. And we're not doing a craft with these today, but we do anticipate doing something with these in the future. So order Send us them. Send your ideas. Yes, definitely. Come craft with us. Order some candles. Craft cans with us. I like that. craft with us. <laughs> craft with us. I love it. We also, um, I don't have an example on the table, but we also added some new face masks to our site. Those are live, right, Emily? Um, I believe so. Okay. Yes, as a matter of fact, one of the customer service representatives just ordered two. So yeah, okay. they're live. They're on the website. Yeah. <laughs> um, so definitely check those out. You, it, the new face masks, masks have an option for you to add um, an additional filter inside if you wanted some extra protection. Um, but they're super comfortable. They have a bunch of different um, adjustable attachments, like your little ear strings can be adjusted to fit your uh -huh. face. So they're pretty cool. So check out those new items and I guess we'll get started. All right, before, well, before we get started, hi, Emily, we want to say hi to everybody out there. Do we have any comments or questions before we get started? Um, you have several people saying hi. Um, and Roberta says she loves the way that the can coolers are individually packaged. Oh. Yes, I do love that too. It makes it so much easier, especially like if you're working on orders um, for customers and things like that. It's cool that you can open it up, design it, slide it back in there, and then ship it to your customers that yeah, way too. Just I love use that. The same <laughs> I love oh. that. All right, so reverse canvases. So we've kind of got this separated in different steps as we have done in previous lives. So we both have a completely assembled canvas that we are going to take apart and show you guys the process of how you do the reverse canvas method. And then we also already have some frames stained that we will then show you the next step and it'll be fun. Yeah, so how many of you out there have already attempted the reverse canvas and how many of you have been doing them for a while and love them? Let us know how you feel about this particular craft. I've done a few, I've done um, lots of different signs in like my bathrooms and things like that. I always see like the fun little signs on Pinterest and going around in the Facebook groups. So I was super excited to try those and I did, but what we're doing today is a little bit different because I've never seen this done before. I'm sure it has been, but I've never seen it before. So this I'm is really telling cool. myself that I came up with this idea on my own because I haven't seen it done before, but it probably has been done. So for those of you who are not familiar, we are using the StarCraft inkjet printables. There are two versions. This is for dark materials. And this is for light materials. That's right. So typically people purchase these and put it on t-shirts and you know other types of fabric but the fact that we're doing that on canvas is super super cool. Yeah. Um, I know that there's probably an easier way to get the same look. I'm like contemplating this with myself <laughs> but you know us crafters we like to go above and beyond to uh, you know That's do right. something in our free time and this is a fun craft. <laughs> So, um, we've got both of our canvases unwrapped and the first thing that you want to do when you're working with reverse canvas is to remove the canvas. 
Now, how you want to go about doing this, there's a couple different ways. Um, some people like to start with the staples, and then some people just like to go to town and cut the uh, canvas off, so it's really up to you. So, I'm going to... Do we have another box cutter somewhere? And please be very, <laughs> very careful with this. I'm always nervous about this because... If anybody is accident prone, it's me. I don't think I can use this, Emily. Oh, does it have no blade in it? It's it's a chip. Oh, Megan broke it. <laughs> Why? <is it? laughs> Throwing her under the bus. <laughs> Megan's like, I'm just in here minding my business. <laughs> I have this. Let me go find you one. Okay. I, I mean, I'll just. We could just demonstrate with one canvas, honestly. I'm going slow because, like I said, I'm super nervous about working with these. Hurting blades. someone? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Last thing I want to do is slice over there into your arms. Okay. <laughs> so we are working with both dark and light materials, but. Um, it's, it's really just personal preference. They both work beautifully on the canvas material. Um, but, but there is a difference to the two of them, right? Right, like I can show you guys an example of one I did yesterday with light materials. Can we go to overhead, Megan? Mm -hmm. I'm glad you looked up because I was like, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Can they see that? Yeah, if you want to try and bring it a little closer, that'd be good. Yeah, like that. So I just chose a... <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> I just chose a manga strip from one of my favorite anime slash manga. And I love that it kind of has a distressed sort of vintage look with the light materials. And it, it looks like I just printed it directly onto the canvas material, which I think is super nice. And I'm just gonna, today I'm gonna be doing another manga strip. I'm gonna have a little section in my room where I hang these up. So I'm really excited for that. Um, I also did an example with the dark materials in color. I haven't put this in the frame yet. Thank you. You're welcome. Are we still on overhead? Yes. Uh -huh. So here is the dark material option. So you can see it's got the vibrant colors and I think it came out beautifully. So we're going to be showing you guys both options today. We got any questions or comments, Emily? Um. <laughs> Someone said, why buy it for $5 when you can make it for $100? Amen. Amen. That's exactly what I, <laughs> that's exactly what I told <laughs> Kennedy earlier. <laughs> How many times are we in the store and we see something and I'm like, I'm not buying that. I can, I make, can make that. I can make that myself. And then you end up spending so much more money on the supplies. <laughs> we were talking about that beforehand because we were like, you know, <laughs> we are going above and beyond to do this, but I enjoyed making this craft so much. Much. It's like one of the first crafts in a long time that I've been super, super excited and like inspired by. So I definitely just wanted to share it with you guys. And I think it's helpful to show you guys the reverse canvas method, regardless of what you decide to do with it. Um, and, you know, it's good to know the inkjet printables work on canvas. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, because like I said, that was a great idea. It's not something I would traditionally, when people ask about the inkjet printables, you know, my go-to is always um, shirts. You know, everyone's making the graduation shirts with the pictures of the graduates on it and things like that. And so that's where my mind goes, the Mother's Day shirts. But this was, this was a really, really cool project, really, really fun. And finally... Take this off. Okay, so I finally got my canvas off. And we're not going to worry about the ends because ultimately we're going to end up cutting these ends off anyway. 
So as long as we have the nice flat surface there, that's all we're really worried about. Now, what I will say, if you've never tried a reverse canvas before, all frames are not created equal. I mean, I cannot, <laughs> I cannot say that enough. When you get the canvas off of your frame, um, you're gonna notice a couple things. So you'll see, I think when Kennedy gets hers off, hers might be a little different. And, and it's different depending upon where you buy it. Some of the stores like Michael's or Hobby Lobby's have different levels. And obviously the pricier levels um, sometimes come with a little bit better frame. Um, but these are great too. The value frames are great, especially if you're doing a lot or if this is a project you're doing with kids or just something for yourself. Um, when you take the canvas off, you're going to notice, or you may notice, that it has staples in the corners here. So those staples actually are holding the frame together. So if you take those staples, staples out, you're going to notice that your frame gets a little bit wobbly. And so you can choose for yourself, are you going to leave those in and just stain with the staples right in there, uh, maybe give it an even more rustic look, or are you going to um, pry those staples out? Um, another thing that you'll decide is whether or not you want to remove the staples in the back. This is a tedious process, <laughs> but um, you know sometimes it's just worth it, depending on the look that you're going for. If you're hanging your frame like this, you're not going to see the staples, so you may not care about removing them. Um, but if you're giving this as a gift or you know selling this, then that may be something that you want to do. Think right. about removing the staples. Um, you do have a quick question. Okay. Someone wants to know, would this work on the regular like, flat canvases? On the regular flat canvases? Like before doing the reverse method? No, I think they mean like, <clears throat> you know how when you're like painting one of these canvases, you can feel it? There's obviously a space between that and the table. Yes. I think they're talking about the ones that are just plain flat. I don't know that they have a frame. And it's just the canvas material? Yeah. Yeah, that would definitely work. Because we're, you know, once you take it off of the frame, then you've got the flat canvas material. So I don't, I don't see why that, that wouldn't work. If, if we are understanding your um, question correctly. She said they're the frameless ones. The frameless ones. Okay, yes. Um, another thing that you're going to want to take into consideration is um, these spaces in the corner of your canvases, if you all can see those. Do you want to leave those open or do you want to do what I did with one of mine and I ended up... Cutting, I've had this one for a while, so I ended up cutting the back to get it out a little bit easier. But I just took some sandable wood filler and I filled in the spaces here. So that's something that you can decide to do or not do. And then I took a little bit of wood glue because I did end up taking my staples out and um, attached my corners with wood glue. And then I ended up with this one. So my, my staples are gone. My You can see the edges are um, filled in there with the sandable wood filler or the stainable wood filler. And then I guess the other thing you have to take into consideration is do you want to sand it down? Yeah. Do you want to get a sanding block and sand it down and make it smooth? Um, some people like the rest of the look and they don't want to do all that. So that's a decision for you to make. Are we staining? Are we staining? I guess we can. Um, you want to grab the can of stain real quick? Yeah. So we can... How do you stain? Why not stain? All right. Any other questions while I grab this thing? Um, questions or comments? Uh, Tristan said this is an awesome idea. Oh, thank, thank you. you. All right. So I'll let you go first, <laughs> since I went first with the box cutter. Okay. So, and I, I don't even think it's on all the way. I think I left it kind of loose. There you go. So stain colors, what's your favorite stain color? Um, we've played with a couple different ones. I was telling them that the one I use most around my house is the Jacobine stain. It's and It's beautiful. <laughs> I wish you would have brought it. I should have brought it. It is a darker um, wood finish, but we also, I, this, I think this is probably my next uh, favorite is the Provincial. We tried this on another wood project that we did and I really like that stain also. So if you like the one that we're using today, it's called Provincial. All right. <laughs> 
And thank goodness it does not take much stain to stain your um, frame in these reverse canvases. You need very, very little stain. Lori said cappuccino is a great color too. Ooh, cappuccino. I haven't seen that one. I'm going to have to take a look at that. Me and Megan saw that one at Hobby Lobby the other day. It's really pretty. Is it like a darker brown? Um, a little bit in a way. I think it's kind of like a mix between like a medium and a dark brown. If I okay. remember it right. <laughs> Roberta said Dr. Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> One day, maybe. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, someone said, just joined. What are you making today? So today we are doing reverse canvases. And Kennedy is demonstrating the step of actually staining the canvases. So we remove the canvas from the frame. And we've talked about some considerations that you might want to have um when you're dealing with different types of frames um another thing that i forgot to mention is some frames come with a bar down the middle of it especially if what? it's some of the longer frames yes i was surprised by this one when i got one frame home <laughs> but it was a bar down the middle and i was like how on earth am i going to get it down so what i ended up doing was taking a hacksaw and sawing the oh my God. <laughs> It sounds dramatic, but it wasn't. I sawed the bar down um, the middle, just sawed it in half, and then was able to pull it out, and the frame was still nice and stable. So don't be surprised by what you find under your canvases. It's kind of fun to work with and figure out you know, what you want to do um, from there on. Like I said, remove the staple, don't remove the staple, sand, um, stain, You know, use your wood glue, your wood filler, whatever it is that you want to do. But the not only are we working with reverse canvases. Not only. <laughs> we are also using two of our very popular products, the StarCraft inkjet printables for light materials and the inkjet printables for dark materials. Both of these work with your inkjet printers. You can print pictures. Um, and the really cool thing about this is you can use this with your vinyl cutting machine, but you don't have to. So if you're just printing an eight and a half by 11 picture or a five by seven picture, whatever size your picture is, if it's gonna be square, then you can take a pair of scissors and just trim it to your needs and then um, peel off the backing if it's for dark materials. Um, so there are two different steps for the um, for light materials and for dark materials that we're going to go over with you all also because they work a little bit differently. Um, so if you're just joining, then you you haven't missed that part, and that that is great information because sometimes customers do struggle with these two products. Um, so we are hoping that we can show you all exactly how to use them so that you become more comfortable with them. Yeah, you guys got two comments. <laughs> <laughs> Lori said more like Surgeon Marina. <laughs> <laughs> With my hacksaw, right? <laughs> yeah. And someone else said, never thought crafting would be so dangerous to get out of saw. <laughs> <laughs> no, I real. I mean, I had to go out and purchase a saw just for that purpose because it's not, you know, it's small. You're just small. proving our point yeah. of seeing something in the store, wanting to buy it, and then thinking, I could make that myself. <laughs> but you had to go and buy a I saw. I had to go and buy a saw. But I have that saw forever now. So if I ever get another reverse canvas with a bar down the middle, you're prepared. I got it. I got it. I'm going to get you to cut my shelves. <laughs> All right, so I think I have successfully stained that. I am going to let mine sit for a little bit just because I want it a little darker. So I'll let that sit and seep in, and then I will go back over with the rag and kind of just remove the wet stain. And I'm really glad that we put this plastic <laughs> cover over the table because it definitely made a mess. So with staining, you know, if you don't like yours um, as dark, then you can go very, very light, which I did to kind of show the difference. I'm just, I haven't even dipped it back in there yet. I'm just using what was left on Kennedy's cloth, and I'm just going to use that to stain. Just to give you all an example, because we do have um, the stains, the frames we're working with today have already been stained, mm -hmm. and hopefully dry, because we did it a couple hours ago. <laughs> But that is great. Um, that's great information. Also, you know, be sure you let your stain dry. Yeah. And if you're doing coats, make sure that you let it dry in between coats also. 
That little goes a long way. I did it again, one glove. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> but the other hand always gets stained on it. So I think you all get the point. Um, if we have any questions about staining, please let us know. But if not, then we will go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so I'm going to put this down here to dry. Like I said, I am doing for dark materials. So my little project here, I decided I would do maybe a series of different Disney princesses. And I think that this is such a cute idea to put around um, a little girl's room or anybody really who's obsessed with Disney um, the way I am. <laughs> so what I did was, like I said, you don't have to use your vinyl cutter with the StarCraft um, for lighter for dark materials, but on this particular one I did and I weeded it out. Um, I peeled off the backing and this is what I was left with, little Miss Princess Jasmine. <laughs> So I printed um, here just to kind of show you also how to get the backing off because that can be a challenge for some people as well. So if it's if I'm using the picture hole, then I'm just going to separate the backing. And sometimes, you know, um, some people will find that, that the paper backing tears and so you may just have to stop at one point and then, you know, work with where it tore and slowly roll it back. Um, you know, different things affect the printables, like the temperature when it's being printed. Um, so you have to take some of those things into consideration. So the dark material is pressed at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, correct? That is at correct. Like a medium pressure? Yep. And what's great is you don't have to worry about mir mirroring it. So this is one that you don't have to worry about mirroring. And this is a very thin, fine, delicate material, but this is the printable vinyl. So you'll notice with the for dark materials, it has the white backing that comes with it. So if I were to set this on here, um, you would see the backing, but you know, white on white, then um, it's not going to stand out as much. But if this were a black canvas, then that may pose a little bit of a problem if I'm trying to go for a look of, you know, just Princess Jasmine. So then keep that in mind. you send it through your Cricut, do a print and cut, and there you, you just go. got your princess. That's right. I did the print and cut today. I was able to successfully do it in the silhouette. So I'm going to learn that. Um, Silhouette Studio, just like the Cricut Design Space, if it kills me. <laughs> so today we did the um, print and cut, and then, so these are my two options. Which Princess Jasmine do I want to use? Do I want the backing? Do I care about the backing? Do I want to cut it out with my vinyl software? But for light materials, it's different, right? Yes. Um, for light materials, for... For one, is pressed at a higher temperature at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you need heavy pressure to work, heavy pressure to work with it. And after you pressed it, the backing of the light materials has to be peeled away while it's hot, which is probably the biggest um, obstacle for me, which I'm a little bit stressed out about today's <laughs> live. Um, but the reason it's so worth it to me is because it doesn't have that white you know paper backing it, it, it has like a translucent paper that it's, it's going to take the color of whatever material it is that you're pressing onto so even though i'm still pressing onto a white canvas you won't be able to see any type of border or anything around it so that's why i like the light materials um, and like she said, the dark materials can be pressed on light or dark colored, you know, t-shirts or whatever material it is that you're pressing onto. So it's really just depending on what craft you're working with. They're both great options though. Now, if you're, if you do have a super intricate design, especially with for dark materials, then you're going to want to purchase the TTD Easy Mask that you always hear us talking about. And what that basically is, is it's this carrier sheet that will help you transfer it from the backing to your design. She came off in one whole piece, so I don't really require the um, Easy Mask, but if it had been several different pieces or words or something like that, then the Easy Mask probably would have been the easiest way for me to transfer from one to another. Right. So keep that in mind. Look at this stain all over the table. <laughs> 
Sorry, go ahead, Emily. No, you're fine. Um, Y'all have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one is with printable vinyl, is there a specific printer or ink that you have to use? Any inkjet printer, as long as your ink cartridges are full and your printer is working fine, like we recommend doing some test prints to make sure all your colors are coming out as they should um, before you work with like a printable vinyl, just to make sure you're not wasting any paper. Um, but yeah, any inkjet printer, like we work with an Epson printer here for our light and dark materials. So, so yeah, it's pretty easy to work with. Yeah. Your next question is, so it's just regular print and cut that you do for them? Exactly. Exactly. That's all that you have to do is just regular print and cut. Um, the good thing about um, working with the silhouette is, you know, silhouette allows for a larger area with the print and cut than the Cricut design space. Um, and because the area that I'm working with today was larger, um, then that served my purpose well. Um, but yeah, it's just a regular print and cut. And then um, someone wants to know, just to clarify, you don't have to mirror either of these products? So I should have been more specific. You do not mirror the dark materials, but you do mirror the light materials. Um, and that is because, you know, with the dark materials, she's simply going to be pressing it Princess Jasmine face up. She's already removed the backing and everything. But with the light materials, I had to mirror the design. So I will be setting this on the canvas. Um, printed side face down and yeah I'll press it and then I'll just remove the backing after the fact. Oh. All right and then Roberta said you got this Kennedy no trusting me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You are my number one supporter. <laughs> Um, something else you want to take into consideration when you are designing your image is that um, when you're doing reverse canvas, you lose some of the surface area of the canvas. So the inside is obviously shorter um, than the canvas would have been if it had been stretched across the frame. So make sure you take that into consideration and size down. Measure the, from the inside of one end of the frame to the other so that your um, image isn't too big and doesn't get cut off by the frame. So I think I'm going to start with um, putting down the jasmine first. Okay. And I'm going to take this over to the heat press. I'm going to fold this section. <laughs> Are you getting it all over you? I could. No, get it no. Over me. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna try. These canvases do get very, very hot. So, Emily, how's that looking in the heat press camera? Oh, you're good right there. Right there? Okay. These canvases do get very hot, so um, yes. please watch your fingers. And I'm just gonna do a couple second tack on this one because I do have it set for the um, temperature of the printable. Okay, now that that's on. I'm going to center. Um, Roberta wants to know what you use for the name Jasmine. This is Caesar Easy Weed in Beach Blue. And it is one of my favorite colors. It's such a pretty color. Yeah, it is. Okay. And now um, we're going to do 350 degrees for 30 seconds, right? It only re this one actually only requires medium pressure, but we've got it cranked up because the four light materials um, does require a heavy, heavy pressure. Um, Jennifer wants to know, do you have any suggestions in using Cricut Design Space with printed images? She has difficulty with the larger images. Um, so when you say larger images, now you're, you're, when you're doing the print and cut, you have a well, I think it prints out as big as uh, five by seven. Um, so I, I totally understand what you're saying because it is um, harder to work with the larger images. The only thing that um, 
that I found to do thus far is just kind of scale down my image. Um, I have seen, and I have not tried, but I have seen some videos out there that kind of um, give you ideas on how to create a greater uh, print area for the print and cut and design space. So I would definitely recommend checking YouTube for that because I saw a couple today as a matter of fact and I didn't have time to sit down and kind of watch how those work. Um, but I would definitely tell you YouTube is a crafter's best friend. So um, are we on overhead? Okay, perfect. So here's my little Princess Jasmine and it's, I mean, it's the material is so thin so you kind of you hardly feel it on here it almost feels like it was like screen printed on here um, which I love and the colors you can see how the colors stayed pretty bright and so now this is something I'm just going to um, put on the back of the frame and I think it's gonna be adorable so do we need to crank the temperature up for the heat press yes I'm going to try to do this. Megan has the magic touch with this heat press. Megan. <laughs> All right, let's see. Just, she doesn't believe us that this thing only works for her. I've never heard it make that noise, ever. <laughs> Three seventy five? Yeah. Okay. Did you get it? Yeah, it's saying three seventy. But a second ago it said three seventy five. Megan, ear the whisperer. Um, you want me to see what it is? Well, she fixes that. Um, I yeah. guess when yeah. I clicked to overhead, it didn't actually take. So if you want to show your canvas one more time on overhead. Yeah, I'm gonna have you do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is that centered right there? Yeah. Can you see that? So I don't know if you can see how thin the material is on there and how much it just kind of looks like such like it was screen printed on. You can almost see the um, fabric coming through. So I know it's on there, nice and smooth, nice and adhered. Um, when you're doing two different types of vinyl, that might be something you want to consider. Um, which one do you want to do first? The one with the lowest temperature or the one with the highest temperature? Um, but I think this one worked out great. I um, did this one just a couple seconds press um, and then added jasmine. Um, what I could have done was added jasmine, pressed it, and then lowered the temp, and then added the easy weed, and that may have, that probably would have been the better option, but it worked. <laughs> so I'll put my frame on here. You got any questions, comments? Um, How's everyone doing? Okay. Now this is the fun part and the scary part. <laughs> stapling? Stapling. So I recommend one of these heavy duty staplers. Um, this is also, well I bought my hacksaw, I also bought one of these at home also. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely spent, but it was my first one and like I said, now I have it forever. Woo! I don't know how loud that comes across, so I don't know that I wanna keep stapling this on. <laughs> Maybe that's something that I should finish after the live is over. Is that really loud? But what you wanna do is kinda of pull your canvas across, stretch it, I like to make it as tight as I can without any puckering or anything like that. And then I'll just go around and staple it. Now, it's just me. I like to go ahead and get it secure and then um, cut off the overage. Um, some people cut it beforehand and that's great too. I've done it both ways, but you know, I always get nervous that I might cut it a little bit too short. So I like to kind of secure it on here and then go back with the scissors and I take off the on. excess. Huh? You so just cut yours? Yeah. 
Well, one time I think I did in like one um, corner when I was first getting started, I think I cut it too short and I was like, oh man. Okay. I hope that's not too loud, I apologize. Jennifer said no, so. Okay. <laughs> Going based off what she thinks. It's not too loud, go ahead. Okay. So that is perfectly in the center. Would you like to... Uh... You ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, we got it, we got it. Ready? Yeah. Okay. You bring it down, and what, I'm peeling it, right? Yes. No. I don't know, what do we do? <laughs> you said you were gonna hold it down and she was gonna I'm gonna hold it down and you're gonna peel it, okay. So I just want to make sure that this sits straight. I'm going to set the frame over top of it and make sure everything looks right. You think those would be better? Yeah, maybe. We can grab some. You know where the tweezers are? I think they're in that yeah. cup right there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. We're good. And this is 375 for how many seconds? 30 seconds. 30 seconds also. So a little bit different process with each one, um, but both very easy to work with. We gotta peel this hot, Marina. All right, I'm ready. All right, come on. <laughs> <sighs> okay. I'm, I'm, so hold I'm holding the canvas, you're peeling, right? Yes. Okay. I mean, if you wanna help me peel, we'll tell it to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Look at that, you got it. Yay! Yay. <laughs> that was so much harder yesterday. <laughs> it really was. That's why I was so nervous, guys. It's because you've had practice now, you're a pro. Yeah. All right. So can we go to overhead? Yes. So here is the light materials. You can see that I did leave a little bit of the white kind of border. I didn't cut directly around the rectangle, but you can't really notice that it's there. So that's the reason that I like the light materials so much. And like I said, it gives you that kind of vintage, distressed look, and I think it looks really cool. It turned out nice. I like it. I think that's a cool idea too. I feel like you're you. We covered both ends of the spectrum: yeah. comic books <laughs> to Disney characters. I like it. Um, you guys have a couple of comments. Okay. okay. Um, Roberta asked, when you lower the temp, how long should you let the heat press sit before it would actually be lowered? Um, so if your heat press has the um, digital dial on it, it'll tell you when it gets to the um, lower temp and then you're good to use it from there. Um, if you're using like a home iron or something, I would let it sit a few minutes. Um, I think even with my home iron, I think it, it, it will blink till it reaches the correct temperature. So it just depends on the either the heat press or the home iron that you're using. One thing I will say about um, if you are using a home iron, um, Kennedy's requires that heavy pressure, so if you don't have enough pressure, your results are going to be a little bit unpredictable. Um, we've seen some different things. Some customers have come in with some different examples of issues that they've had, and it's all been surrounding um, the pressure that they've been using, and we've seen where the image will kind of crack up a little bit or um, kind of get fuzzy. 
and you know what I'm talking about if you've had this problem. Um, so make sure that you use adequate pressure and um, I would not suggest a home iron for, the, for light materials. Um, and then um, someone said tool, tool queen, you need a vinyl toolbox knife. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> for yeah, for for tools, right? <laughs> I love it. And then one more question. Um, someone said, "Do you use a top cover sheet?" So when we're pressing the inkjet printables, if you notice on our heat press machine, we have a Teflon uh, sheet there that we always use. So we definitely need the Teflon sheet, and I would def recommend the Teflon sheet. We tried it yesterday <laughs> without it. We did not need to mention that. It was for experimental <laughs> I just, purposes. I said only. we. I didn't even say who did it. I said we. It tried. was Marina. For the <laughs> <one who was> wondering. <laughs> so definitely, you don't want this image to stick to the top of your heat press machine. Not saying that that happened, but <laughs> make sure you use your your Teflon sheet. So um, yeah, we conveniently have ours on our heat press so that we never ever forget it. That's right. But if you are using for dark materials, then you may require a transfer mask depending on how many pieces there are to your design. So that could be another um, cover that, you, that you'll that you need. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, uh, two questions. Okay. Um, one person wants to know, can you purchase the vinyl for postage to the UK? So that would be the same answer as like for the Canada. freight forwarding companies. Mm -hmm. So um, what you would need to do is um, contact a freight forwarding company and then we could possibly ship to them and then they can forward your packages over to you. We don't ship directly, um, but there are options available out there. So that's something that you may want to look into. And Jennifer said, um, it's great seeing y'all again, and yeah, also, okay. what is the name of the product again? Okay, so we're working with two. We have the... <laughs> <laughs> we're working with two. It's too this, loud. <laughs> this one is the StarCraft Inkjet Printables for dark materials. It's, it's the one with the red writing. It has a red backing. It has red writing on it. And then this is the for light materials. It's got a green theme, so you'll see the green writing on the back of it. Um, they do both come with general instructions on the cover sheet. Um, and you can work with any inkjet printer, so they're really easy to work with. And we do have them on our site, available in 10 packs and 25 packs. And I just noticed it says hand iron can be used, but is not recommended. So there you go with that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know I told you that. <laughs> All right. So we're going to finish stapling these off the camera <laughs> so that we don't continue to make noise. But I feel like you all get the um, general idea of what we had going on here. Two totally different um, ways to use the inkjet printables. I love One. this so much. <laughs> I adore it. I think these came out so cute. Can you imagine all of the Disney princesses and if I was to put this around in a in a little Disney themed room? Yes. That would be adorable. Yes. So I really I really really like these. And yes, um, there might have been another way to do it, but you use the inkjet printables. What look at all the detail that's in this. I could have never replicated that with vinyl. And I mean, I guess I could have printed it out on paper, but I just like this look so yeah. much better. So yeah. It gives a, a little edge to it. Like I said, you can you can see the canvas material through this print here, and it just looks really cool. So to each their own. That's right. And think about a family picture. Yeah. Because you don't have to just do like characters. You can um, print out your family picture on one of these, and then apply it to a canvas also. Mm -hmm. I mean, people pay a lot of money to have their um, family pictures on canvases, and this is a really That's inexpensive true. way to do it. So be a good gift idea. But yes. Yeah, so I hope you guys learned some stuff today. I think the reverse canvases are a really cool craft that you could do at home. And try out the inkjet printables. Do we have any questions or comments before we go? Uh, one last question. Okay. Um, Jennifer wants to know, how do you know which product to use? Great question. So for dark materials, is going to be for 
anything darker than I would say light gray <laughs> yeah like a, a, a light version of whatever color that you're using the great thing about for dark materials is you can you can put this on a white shirt you can put this on a black shirt you can put it on any color in between um, because it has that white backing to it so it's going to stand out on the material when you get into it for light materials you don't have that backing it's actually picking up a little bit of the color of your shirt so you won't see that a whole lot um, on a really really light shirt like a light pink a light yellow maybe but if you get into the darker colors and we've done it before we've done it like on an orange shirt and it you know you could see the color of the shirt through uh, the inkjet printable but it did also come out you know in a really cool result so you know it gives you kind of that vintage distressed look as well but I typically recommend the dark materials just because it works with dark and light colored shirts right. um, but the light materials have a really really cool finish it's just personal preference honestly yeah. get them both and try them <laughs> <laughs> And then one last question. Okay. Um, Linda wants to know what side of the canvas you're pressing it on. Good question. Great question. So this would be the side that you would uh, paint on. This is the side that's facing you when you first get your canvas in the in the package. I was looking to see if we have one in the package. Um, but you'll see the difference. This is the whiter side. Um, if you look at the backing, it almost goes to like a browner color a little bit. So you will you can identify. But if you wanted to press on this side, you absolutely could. I mean, um, there's no finish or anything like that. You could press on either side. So, you know, to each his own. I, I chose the, the whiter side. But um, I don't think that there are any wrong answers when doing that. Whatever you like. Whatever you like. Right. Which is what makes this such a great, great right? craft. It's so versatile. Customize it however. Yeah. Right. Well, looks right. like that's it. So thank you to anyone and everyone who joined us. If you ever have any craft recommendations, please let us know and we will try and include it in a future video. Don't forget about our face masks and our can coolers that are on our site for anyone who missed that in the beginning of the video. So go check those out. Yes. And um, we'll see you guys next time.